Smash Mode presents Free on 63. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen of Art of Conquest? Before we even begin day two of Free on 63, I want to show you the importance of getting Soulless Scourge as soon as possible. For those of you who are not familiar with Soulless Scourge, that is Gazul's ultimate. I recommend always rushing to get this ultimate as soon as possible, and I'm about to show you why. Here is my very first PvP battle on 63. Now this player's army was stronger than mine. I was using scorpions up front, and we had a, a variety of range units in the back. He would have definitely had this victory. But look at that Zola skirt. We are talking half of his army gone from that one. And that was most of his silver units. That is why. You want to wait and you want to get two levels of Solar Scourge the moment he becomes level 10. That is also going to get you through most of the tactics school. That move will give you such an edge, at least for about, I'd say, three to four days. So day two is done. Ended up with 17.5k. Let's see what's in our mithril chest. Oh, okay. Some silver scorpions. Getting those a little early. So first off, actually, I ended the day at 18.1. <laughs> uh, not really, though. So for your research early on, you want to pick one unit that is gold. That's going to cost gold. You want to focus on that. I'm going to be focused on the front line, getting these blood claws. And then for our elixir, I'm going to be focusing on these spiders. And I cannot wait to see what they can do. I've played against them, and they are a serious pain in the butt. But I, I tried. I really wanted to get them for you guys today, but there were just not enough cards out there. I will have them tomorrow. Now for day two, your main focus, you want to, of course, get the balance with the peasants. And I did forget to tell you, the peasants do work with multipliers. So if you're getting 100% extra gold, that means each peasant is worth two gold, not just one. So for day two, we do not want to be raiding anybody yet. We want to be getting stronger and we want to be building up these stamina potions and a very good way to build up stamina potions is buying these experiences these 10k xps and i'm about to show you why let's say we have a hero for example let's say let's see let's say vega was at low stamina hypothetically she's not right now she's doing real good at five but she's 5,000 from leveling. So we take one of those little experiences. Click Vega. And there is an extra 6 stamina. Not to mention, they gain a level and get a little bit stronger. That's going to be very important for building up those stamina bottles. Not to mention... The experiences, the 10k experience, you can get five of those for the price of one stamina bottle. Now for looting carts, I really like to pick the closest allied base in the middle of the map. And preferably, you want to have your base pretty far on the other side of the map. I mean, in all honesty, if this was a perfect situation, I would want Warham. Because let's say there's a card over there. You always have the option to teleport. 
you don't want to have to run all the way over there and then have someone else take that cart. If you can teleport over there, there's a good chance you'll get to it first. And finally, no matter what you put on this wall, at the end of day two, I want you to fill it up. If it says you can have 50 sets of troops on there, you put 50 sets. Nobody's gonna know what these sets are. But they'll look at you and they will look at somebody else with three sets or even 10 sets. And even if they have a little bit less loot than you do, they are not going to attack you because they don't wanna risk everything this early. That's all I have for today. Be seeing you tomorrow, day three. Thank you for watching. Smash mode. Have a great day.